Vayne is a marksman champion that is pretty much always relevant in solo queue due to her great outplay potential and damage. With Vayne you can do both, proactively make plays and react to whatever your team's doing. And because of this, most high elo AD carries have Vayne in their champion pool. Vayne is just the perfect marksman to learn if you want to climb. The best example for this is the pro player Jesu, who is also a challenger in solo queue and has gained almost 500 LP just from playing Vayne. I will show you exactly what he does to carry all of these games in just a second, but let's first have a look at his runes and items so you can copy those right away. Jesu takes the same rune page every single game, and for good reason, it is very consistent. You go for Lethal Tempo, Presence of Mind, Legend Bloodline and Cutdown, with Magical Footwear and Biscuit Delivery secondary. Vayne is all about auto-attacking, literally all of her damage comes from her autos, and Lethal Tempo amplifies that by a lot. It gives you more triggers from your W, better kiting with its improved range, and it shines in longer extended fights, which is exactly the situation in which Vayne wants to be. Some people take press the attack for better laning power, but the lane phase is not where Vayne wants to shine truly. Lethal tempo is way more consistent and should be your choice. Now presence of mind is somewhat debatable. Most Vayne players take triumph for the better healing and fights so they can stay alive for longer, but I guess Jezu really doesn't want to run out of mana for his Q stealth. But especially considering you also have biscuit delivery in this page, feel free to swap this for triumph if you want to. However, both runes are justifiable. Legend Bloodline and Cutdown are also late game runes. Bloodline for the better healing, Cutdown for more damage. Again, Vayne's game plan is dominating later on. The early game is not as important as long as you can get your farm, so having those scaling runes really doubles down on that plan. Now Magical Footwear is always a classic, also kind of a late game rune as you don't really get value before 12 minutes, but the extra gold goes a long way on AD carries. Mind you, by not actually having to buy those boots, you now have 300 gold which you can instead spend on your next item, on your next big power spike. And speaking of items, Jesus' core build is always the same as well. Blade of the Ruined King first, Berserker's Greaves for your boots, and Ginzo's Rageblade for your mythic. As mentioned, vein and attack speed are a match made in heaven. The more attack speed you have, the more you will do with your W, which is your main way of dealing damage in the late game. Blade, Berserker's Greaves and Ginzo's Rageblade will allow you to duel any opponent in the late game no matter what you buy next. And this is exactly the point when looking at Jesus' other items. Yes, we do have good damage options in Wit's End and Phantom Dancer, but also the highly defensive Randuin's Omen. In most of his games, Jesu actually buys Wit's End or Randuin's Omen for his next item, depending on which damage type is more dangerous in the lobby. The rule of thumb for Vayne is really, the longer you can stay alive, the longer you can keep auto-attacking your enemies, and they can't resist your W true damage forever. Only very rarely should you go for the full damage option of Phantom Dancer, and even Phantom Dancer is arguably semi-defensive with its movement speed. Being able to out-kite and dodge enemy skill shots saves you a lot of trouble as well. In any case, let's now finally jump into the analysis. Now Vayne in the early game is not really under any pressure. You are a scaling champion, and scaling should be your objective. You want to avoid early trades if possible, because you will outscale most enemies no matter what. But here we have a special case, because Kaisa is also a scaling champion, and she took a really bad fight right from the start. As you can see, not only does Jizu get some empowered cues on her, but then she also stays in range of Rakan's knockup, wasting her summoner spell, putting her at a major summoner spell disadvantage. Now Rel goes for the counter engage here, but Bane already has stacks on her lethal tempo, and Kaisa doesn't have the health to back the fight up. So ultimately, due to the flash disadvantage, they can flash after her and get first blood, and yes, Vayne has to overcommit here to get that kill, and ends up dying to the tower, equalizing the kills, but it's still worth, because first blood is worth more gold. Could she have lived with triumph instead of presence of mind? Who knows. However, it is a beautiful example of how you can still make things happen even when playing a late game champion. You have to punish the enemy for their mistakes, even if they're just small ones from an outsider's perspective. But you must keep in mind that this is only the case because the enemy AD carry is also quite weak early. Should you be playing against an early game powerhouse like Caitlyn for example, this will be a lot more difficult and you have to resort to farming for the most part. And in case you wonder how Vayne got double buffs, look at the minimap. Bot lane is pushed in, so Shizu cannot actually get much by going there. However, there is a fight in the mid lane, and by pathing there instantly, he doesn't lose any farm in the bot lane, but instead can help his team a big deal. This is exactly why you should always watch your minimap, else opportunities like these are too easy to miss. 
In any case, the opposing Kaisa is also a challenger tier player, so she's not giving Jesu kills for free. As a consequence, you just resume with Vayne's standard game plan. You grab your farm, you play for your late game. Especially the ways in which you manage your minion wave are important here, because the closer you are to your tower while farming, the harder it is for the enemy to gank you. However, there is one big turning point in lane for Vayne. When she reaches level 6, Vayne has one of the strongest level 6 power spikes in all of bot lane, turning her from a pushover into an absolutely monstrous duelist one second to the next. Of course, the enemy Kaiser plays it safe and doesn't die here, but still, that health advantage can go a long way. To be exact, in many low elo lobbies, Kai'Sa actually would have died right then and there to Rakan's dive, but the challenger opponent is able to avoid it, as they know how to read the map correctly. Oh, and by the way, if you're a long-term viewer of this channel, you know that typically for these guides videos I use a script and read from it, but I'm now trying to use bullet points to be more freestyle, to breathe a little bit of more life into these. Let me know what you think about this, and also subscribe! You should definitely subscribe! In any case, Vayne's level 6 is not the only power spike you'll have. Jesu now has also completed Blade of the Ruined King, which is the best dueling item you can have at this point, and look how he puts it to use. Note how Kaisa actually had no chance to react here. Vayne is sitting on the control ward, uses the stealth from her ultimate to get out of that bush and gets that first auto in. Kaisa at this point has to fight, she has no way to run from a Vayne with her passive, and taking that fight ultimately allows her to deal some damage back, but as you know, a Vayne in a duel with this item and with her ultimate is just way too much. Anyway, now that lane phase is over, you need to start impacting the rest of the map. There are towers to be taken, there are objectives to be taken and controlled, and Vayne is not at her strongest, but look at her team fighting already with just Blade of the Ruined King. And this is exactly what I mean by outplay potential. Vayne is not even visible for the enemy here. She uses the stealth of her ultimate in combination with this bush to juke in and out of vision constantly. They can't really focus her down and they're taking so much damage from her auto attacks. Now after a fight like this, you need to of course also make sure you get some extra mileage. Pushing the wave into the tower, however, is a good first step, and Rift Herald is naturally the next best objective to take from this position, allowing you to snowball the map even further. However, don't forget you are still a scaling hyper carry. Every item you acquire will make you exponentially stronger, and now Jesu has his Rage Blade, and look how Vayne goes wild with this. Admittedly, this fight was kind of risky, but look how quickly Zeri goes down. This is the perfect example of why you need more defensive items and not more offensive ones. You have all the damage in the world already, and by just staying alive long enough to apply your damage, you're already carrying for your team. And now blue team can finally put that herald from earlier to use. Believe it or not, but blue team were actually behind in gold up until now, and they were at mid lane tower disadvantage. When your mid lane tower falls, you lose control over the entrances to your jungle, making rotations for the enemy super free. And because blue team now don't have to deal with constant minion pressure anymore, they actually dare to go for Baron. But I got a question for you. What happens if a Vayne, who was already super strong, gets even more items? Yeah, she crushes teamfights. And this is exactly why lethal tempo is so dangerous in the late game. It amplifies your kiting by so much, and no matter how tanky the enemy, no matter how much armor, they will melt in just a couple of hits. Of course, with Baron buff you're now able to take all the enemy towers, and the enemy can't really do much back to you. By the time they have respawned and can actually try to defend, mid lane inhibitor is already gone, and top lane is under a lot of pressure as well. And you definitely don't want to fight this Bane right now. She is so strong, and she will shred you to pieces. Doesn't matter what you try, doesn't matter where you position. 
However, having good mechanics is only part of the equation. Another huge aspect of this player's success is their macro knowledge. If you want to improve your AD carry macro skills too, then just click the link on your screen.